Praise the Lord, everyone. Glad that you could join us this evening for our time of devotion before we enter into family prayer. So thankful for a good weekend last weekend, Resurrection Sunday, celebrating the resurrection, and then um, even further back, our time of communion on Friday evening, Good Friday. I know that we had a great time as a family and trust that you did as well. Uh, but as we move forward here tonight, I wanted to um, kind of tag along with what Pastor has been doing on Wednesday night, talking about songs for all seasons and looking at the Psalms. And specifically, I wanted to look at Psalm 46 tonight. And um, just this is a beautiful Psalm that is a great encouragement to us. And just a little bit of history, I guess, around this Psalm. Um, 1527, there was a great plague through parts of Europe, and it was the bubonic plague, it was an outbreak, and it came to Wittenberg where the reformer Martin Luther lived, and Luther was faced with this decision about whether he should flee or stay, and the death rates for the bubonic plague were astronomically high, and in the course of various outbreaks over a couple of centuries in Europe, uh, just millions and millions of people were killed. And so it was very clear this was a, a dangerous situation and many people did leave. Those that had the means to leave did. And Luther was even encouraged to do so. But he chose to stay and um, he actually, uh, you can look it up, There's a he kind of laid out his philosophy for why he stayed. He stayed out of service and he turned his home into a bit of an infirmary. The idea of a hospital where people would go to be treated. Uh, hospitals were pretty rare in those days. And so Luther kind of turned his own home into a makeshift hospital. But somewhere during this time frame, it looks like between 1527 and 1529 probably, he wrote the famous hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And that hymn is more or less a paraphrase of Psalm 46 strongly influenced by Psalm 46. And so it's interesting to tie in to our current situation of uh, Psalm 46 and the way it proved to be a great comfort to those historically who were in situations somewhat similar to what we find ourselves in tonight. And so I wanted to look at this because it is a, um, it is a beautiful Psalm. It is a great encouragement it's not exactly clear what the historical setting was in which this was written, but we will see that it was a time of great difficulty and uh, a time of great difficulty for the nation of Israel, not just for the psalmist. So let's just dive right in. The first verse, very famous and familiar verse, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And I'll just continue on. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, mm -hmm. Selah. So you see in this opening stanza here, the establishment of God as a strength and a refuge and a place of safety. And uh, the language here, as I indicated, really indicates this is not just a crisis for the psalmist, but it is a shared crisis, probably a national one. God is our refuge, therefore will not we fear. The plural nouns there indicate that this is a uh, something that is a shared crisis. And so we see this laid out very clearly. God is a refuge and strength. And it's a great comfort to know that God is a place of safety and that there is strength in God. And <clears throat> that second portion of the first verse, a very present help in trouble. Now, I've heard this verse for years, and I know in my younger days I thought, how could someone be very present? It's one, it seems like you're either present or you're not. But the psalmist is emphasizing the immediate availability of God. And I think we've probably all experienced those times perhaps when we were present but not engaged or those around us may have been present and not engaged. But the psalmist here is emphasizing the fact that not only is God present, but he is readily available. He's, he is emphasizing 
the immediacy of God. And this is a great comfort to us because it's one thing to know that God is strong and that he is safe, but if he is distant and if he is far removed, then that's of little benefit to us. But the psalmist says for us to take comfort because we know God is a refuge, he is a fortress, he's a place that we can go for safety. He is strong and he is very present help in our trouble. And so that leads directly to the next verse, therefore, will we not fear? It only makes sense. If God is a refuge and he's a strength and he's very present, then we will not give in to fear and we won't be afraid. And this is a theme, of course, that's woven throughout the Psalms. The psalmist says, I will not be afraid of the terror by night. Psalm 91. Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And you can find this over and over again. Psalm 3 talks about not being afraid because he knows in spite of the difficulty that he's in that God is his refuge and his healer. And so we see this theme woven throughout and it's repeated here very clearly. And the, the, the line of reasoning makes perfect sense. God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. So therefore, we will not fear. And notice as he continues on, though the earth be removed, or some translations say, though the earth be changed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, and though the waters thereof, the waters of the sea roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, we're not going to be afraid, regardless of circumstances, in spite of how earth shaking and how much upheaval is around, we're not going to be afraid. The psalmist is emphasizing the fact that our trust and our hope is in God, and we are that trust and that hope, and that lack of fear is immune to circumstances, that even in the most tumultuous times, we can trust and we can hope in God. Notice what he says, though the earth be changed and the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea. If the, if the mountains were to slide off into the sea and in verse four, that, or verse three rather, the waters thereof roar and be troubled. If the mountains slide into the sea and create tsunamis and cause all kinds of problems and those symbols of what we thought of were great strength are now overtaken by the sea, the mountains shake and they are broken up by the swelling of the water over the top of them. Uh, there's this image of the things that we look to to be strong being slid into the sea and they're no longer accessible and they're, they're overwhelmed by, uh, by those seas in which they slide into. All of the things that we might have trusted in are turned upside down, so to speak, and they're put away where we can no longer reach them. Even in those situations, we're not going to fear and we're not going to be afraid, but our trust is going to be in God. I'm thankful to know that we have a God who sits above the circumstances and that we can trust in him. We've referred to it often in these times. When my heart is overwhelmed, Psalm 61, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. It's higher than those mountains that might be slid into the sea. It's the rock that we look to is above all of that. What a great hope to know that our safety and our security is not su subject to the circumstances of life. Notice then in verse 4, the tone changes a little bit. There is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. The imagery changes from being a, a fortress or a place of safety. It now turns to provision. In the ancient world with walled cities, one tactic of invading armies would be laid to lay siege to the city around the walls and then to, if they could cut off supplies of water or of food, then they would have the city right where they wanted them and they could win the battle. And so this tactic, the image here is kind of alluding to that tactic. Maybe we infer from this that, that Israel is surrounded, maybe even Jerusalem is surrounded. And, um, the psalmist is crying out, saying God is a refuge and strength. He's a source of safety, but also he is a supply of what we need. The psalmist says there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. So even though 
um, we may be cut off. Our source of supply is not from the things that have been removed by circumstances of life, but God is our source of supply. Not only is he a fortress, not only is he a strength, but he is also a provider. He is one who gives us that strength and the streams of that river run throughout his city and run throughout his people and, and uh, they provide sustenance to all of the people of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. I, I can't help but note there's a little bit of an undertone of New Testament, new birth kind of terminology going in here where the Lord stood in John 7 and said, if any man believe on me, as the scripture said, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. And I'm thankful to know that God is our source of supply, not only of the things that we have need of physically, not only of those very real difficulties that we find ourselves in economically, financially, and every other way God is our provider, but spiritually he is our provider. And uh, this turn of the language here just kind of struck me. Notice verse 5, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. God is going to be the one who does the help. He is in the midst of her. And, and, and notice again, there's this shift because in the beginning, God is our refuge and strength. We run to him. We are in God. But then by verse 5, he's become our provision and he's in the midst of us. And again, there is this kind of New Testament, new birth thinking where um, we are in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. We are baptized into his body. We are in Christ. He is our safety. He is our refuge. But yet at the same time, it is his spirit that dwells in us. We are in him. He is in us. Just like the psalmist is saying here, we can take refuge in God, but God is also in the midst of us very in a very real way, not just defending us, but also providing for us and nurturing us and strengthening us from the inside out. And he says, God will help her. And, and that right early, he's always on time. He has everything that we need and he brings it to us and provides it to us right on time. Verse 6, the heathen raged, the kingdoms moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. Uh, you can see the, the psalmist is looking and saying, those that have surrounded us, the, the, the heathen, the, the Gentiles, those that would come against us, they rage and they utter their rage against us and they, they bring their best and so much so that kingdoms were shaken. And when we see ourselves in this situation where the whole world has been brought to a standstill. And yet the psalmist says, when he uttered his voice, the earth melted. God was able to change things just by raising his voice. And I don't know about you, but when I have been in those situations and situations like this, when you hear the voice of the Lord, there is a, a calming effect and everything else that seems so um, overwhelming and so huge all of a sudden it shrinks in the presence of God and in the face of his voice and I'm thankful for that and so the psalmist wraps up this first half of the psalm with verse 7 the Lord of hosts is with us the God of Jacob is our refuge Selah and you see this hearkening back to verse 1 about the refuge that he's the place of safety I'm thankful today that in times of difficulty, like what we're going through and wondering and not knowing how things are going to turn out and what the outcome might be, yet we can trust in the Lord and we can have faith that God is going to do this work. And certainly for us, born again, believers in the body of Christ, we have a great hope to know that God is our refuge and that also his provision is with us. And it strengthens us, it nurtures us, and it will keep us, and it will preserve us unto the day of the Lord. Well, be encouraged tonight. Hope that you have a great time of prayer with your families here in just a few minutes. Trust in the Lord. Therefore, because God is with us, he is our refuge, he is our strength in times of trouble, we will not fear because we know God is with us. Lord bless you. We hope to see you soon. In Jesus' name.